close your eyes. Agatha sits in her rocking chair as she listens. It's all she's done for the last 60 years. She listens. She lost her vision as a young girl, same age as Sam, her caretaker. Sam had been with Agatha for only a week, but had truly grown to love the old woman. Even though Agatha never spoke to her, she felt a connection that she had never known before. No one knew why Agatha never spoke. As far as the doctors could tell, she had a fully functioning tongue and vocal cords. She simply chose never to speak. What seemed clear was that something had traumatized Agatha as a young woman. Something traumatized her so bad that she blinded herself with chemicals and refused to ever speak again. Despite the lack of an ability to see, as well as the unwillingness to speak, Agatha too felt close to Sam. Subtle body language and slight holdings of hands were all Agatha needed to communicate to Sam how she felt. Agatha felt safe with Sam, and Sam felt love for Agatha. On this night, however, a look of confusion has come over Agatha's face. She turns her head to the left, and then to the right. She cannot understand what is happening right now, and her feelings are mixed. Sam. She whispers for the first time in 60 years. At that moment, Sam is admiring herself in a mirror. She is wearing an old pair of glasses that were kept in an old box in the attic. Curious, she brought the box downstairs and asked Agatha if she could see what was inside. Seeing no problem with this, Agatha had waved her hand in a go-for-it motion. After removing the lid, Sam picked up the old bifocals and placed them on her face. At that exact moment, she saw the look of shock on Agatha's face as her name left the old woman's lips. She looked up and saw something behind her. Outside the living room window was a black humanoid figure. It was tall and skinny, with a pale white dagger tooth smile that curled the edges above its bright red eyes. What the fuck? Said Sam in a tone that didn't know whether to be scared, confused, or some combination of the two. Sam? Agatha said again, this time changing her whisper to a squeaky croak. Agatha? Answered Sam, completely shocked at the fact that this old woman was speaking for the first time in 60 years. She walked over and held her small, frail hands. There's someone, something outside. I'm sorry. Agatha croaked, the sound of anguish in her voice. I'll be right back, Sam responded, not sure what to say or even what Agatha had to be sorry about. I have to make sure the doors and windows are locked. She pulls away. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. Sam ignores Agatha again, making sure to focus on the emergency situation at hand. She looks at the window again and notices that figure is still outside, but it's slightly closer now. Sam goes around the house, fully securing all doors and windows, but as she looks out the kitchen door leading to the backyard, she notices another one. Or is it the same one? Sam isn't sure, but it looks exactly the same. Tall and dark with a terrifying smile and eyes like a demon. It's even closer to the house than the other one from the living room window. She lets out a shriek when she sees it and rushes back to the living room after she is sure the kitchen is secured. She looks out the living room window again and screams once more when she sees the figure yet again, even closer now. Agatha is crying now but then calms herself down. Sam, she says again, you have to close your eyes. What? Sam replies. No, I, I have to call the police. Sam pulls out her phone and shouts in anger when she realizes the battery is completely dead. What? She screams. No, I just charged this stupid thing. Having no need for a phone, 
as Agatha hadn't spoken in 60 years, Sam had no means of calling for help. Sam, Agatha screams weakly. Sam stops and looks at the old woman. You have to close your eyes. Why? Because he will keep getting closer the longer you keep them open, Agatha says as she places her face in her hands. Trying to wrap her head around what Agatha just said, she walks over to the old woman and kneels before her. Agatha, what is going on? I will tell you, but you have to close your eyes, please. Okay, says Sam, and she does so. Sixty years, Agatha began. Sixty years ago, I first saw that thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why it's here. But I do know that if it gets to you, it will kill you. Just like it killed my brothers all those years ago. Sam didn't know what to say. She didn't even know that Agatha had brothers, let alone that they had died 60 years ago. Agatha continues, We had this friend, Christina, who at the time we thought was just strange. People around town said she was a witch, but we didn't ever believe that. We just thought she was weird, and so one day we felt bad and invited her over. At first, things were great. We got along great, and my oldest brother Tommy even developed a crush on her. Christina liked him too, so they started to date, and eventually, Tommy proposed to her. Then one day, he comes over in a panic saying, It's true. It was all true. Apparently, Tommy had walked in on her performing some kind of ritual, and he panicked. He ran over here and said she was a witch, and that we all had to stay away from her. Soon, there was a loud knocking on the door, and I could hear Christina pleading for Tommy to open the door and talk to him. Tommy refused for the longest time until we heard John, our youngest brother, at the door too. We could hear him asking Christina what was wrong, but before she could answer, Tommy swung the door open and pulled John inside. But before he could shut the door, Christina shoved her way inside too. I had never seen such hatred in someone's eyes before. Her eyes turned red and her skin became black like charcoal. She waved her hands and some kind of force pulled all three of us towards her. In the vilest voice I had ever heard, she said, You're no better than the rest of them. Then she spits in our faces. We all wore glasses, or else she would have gotten it in our eyes. But now, that makes so much more sense. Sam started to piece it all together too. Agatha continues. Christina then just leaves. We're all standing there in shock. Suddenly, we all begin to see them. Each of us only saw one specifically for us, but there was the black figure you just saw. They start out a good distance away, but as long as your eyes are open, they get closer and closer. We thought there was more than one because we would see them out the front window and make our way out to the back and it'd be there too. But there is absolutely only one. One for each of us. I know this because as they got closer, they got inside. Past all the doors and locks, they just kept getting closer. When they were in the same room as us, no matter which direction we turn our head, it would be in our direct line of sight as long as it was somewhere we could see it. It could phase through any walls or objects that were in its path, so locking ourselves in a closet or anything was just pointless. Before too long, the closer they got, the faster they got. So we all just sat there with our eyes completely shut. 
we knew that the second we opened our eyes, we were dead. Tommy was the first to experience the consequences. He said, oh, thank God. And the next thing we hear is him screaming and crying. Then nothing. We couldn't figure out why he did it. We sat there for, I don't know how long, when I heard John say, Mom, is that you? Before I could tell him to keep his eyes closed, he started screaming and crying just like Tommy did. And then nothing. I sat there alone, not trusting any of the voices that thing used to pretend to be. It knew of every person I'd ever known and used every one of them. It even touched me, patting me on the back saying, it's okay, we're fine, it's gone, using Tommy's voice. But I knew better. Eventually, I got up and shoved my way past it. Feeling my way around the house, I tried to get away from it, but it just stayed with me. I eventually found myself in the laundry room. The entire time, it wouldn't shut up. It just kept saying everything it could think of to get me to open my eyes. I couldn't take it anymore. I did the only thing I could think of. I felt around until I found the bleach and I poured it into my eyes. The pain was unbelievable and I screamed and I could still hear it. Instead of trying to get me to open my now useless eyes, now it was insulting me. It called me all sorts of horrible names and said so many horrible things to me. I just laid there and sobbed until somebody found me. I guess Tommy and John's bodies weren't there because they were ruled as missing persons. I kept getting question after question, but I never spoke again. I had nothing to say because no one would ever believe me. And after all these years, it kept talking. Agatha lets out a deep sigh. Until tonight. No, she whispers. No, no, no. This isn't real. This can't be real. You're crazy. You're just a crazy old person, and there's just a couple of psychos trying to get in. Sam opens her eyes and runs to the kitchen, grabbing a knife. Agatha can almost feel her heart break. As Sam grabs the knife, she looks out the window and screams out as she sees the horrifying face directly in front of the glass. She turns and runs to the living room and screams again. Standing in the living room, right in front of the front door, stands the tall black demon. It's even more horrifying up close. Sam turns to run up the stairs, but there it is again. No matter which direction she turns, it's there, moving closer and closer. She turns to face the demon and runs towards it, swinging the knife but it goes right through it as if it's not even there. She backs up and turns to Agatha. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Agatha repeats over and over again, not realizing the demonic body standing through her as though she were some kind of hologram. She falls to her knees and sobs, squeezing her eyes shut. Through Agatha's repeating apologies, she can hear other voices all around her. She can hear her mother say, Open your eyes, sweetie. Mommy's here. She can hear Jeff, her boyfriend, say, I'm here. I won't let anything happen. Just open your eyes, babe. She can even hear Agatha, through the actual Agatha's crying, say, Sam, it's gone. It gave up. You're safe. You can open them now. She can even hear the sound of a dog that sounds exactly like her own, and can even feel his tongue lick her on the face. Sam and Agatha stay there for what seems like an eternity. 
The voice never leaves Sam. Eventually, Sam reaches her breaking point. She grips the knife hard and slowly places it to her left eye. As she prepares herself, she can hear what sounds like the door being broken down. She can hear the sound of multiple footsteps and what sounds like the police. She then hears a loud commanding voice, put down the weapon and put your hands on your head. She drops the knife and does so. She sobs, not daring to open her eyes. She can hear another voice say from across the room, she's gone. It hadn't even occurred to her that she could no longer hear Agatha's sorrows as the demonic voices had been relentless even now. She sobs even more. Sam feels an arm grab hers and she picks herself up. Suddenly, an idea pops into her head. The glasses, she yells. Look at the glasses. She can hear mumbles of confusion. Soon, she hears the sound of someone walking around the room. These old things, a voice says. Yes, she exclaims. You have to look through them. It will explain everything. Sam becomes anxious as she waits for the voices to stop. Until finally, they do. Silence. Absolute silence. She sighs in relief and slowly opens her eyes.